tree shrub windbreaks can be designed for a variety of purposes, including wildlife habitat, snow control, wind protection for homes, to reduce erosion from crop fields, and to provide diversity and beauty to the landscape. They may even generate income from tree or shrub products. Base the design of your windbreak primarily on its purpose while considering site conditions. In this program, we'll cover four aspects of windbreak design to think about while planning a windbreak. The first aspect of windbreak design we'll consider is density. The effectiveness of a windbreak often is expressed in terms of its density, the ratio of the solid area of the trees or shrubs to the total area of the windbreak. This takes a bit of practice to visualize. Think of a slatted snow fence. The total area of the fence has 50% slats or solid area, so the density is 50%. If the main purpose of your windbreak is to spread snow across cropland, the windbreak should have a density of 25-35%. to 35%. Some people plant rows of deciduous shrubs. You just want to slow down the wind enough so that it drops the snow. If the main purpose of the windbreak is to protect an area from snow, the windbreak should have a density of 70 to 80 percent. You can use multiple rows of dense conifer trees or closely spaced shrubs. Some dense conifers are eastern red cedar and rocky mountain juniper. Most farmstead or livestock windbreaks should aim for a density of 40 to 60 percent. You can reach this density by planting multiple rows of conifer and broadleaf trees. A second aspect to consider for windbreak design is location. Orient the windbreak perpendicular to the prevailing wind to give the most effective protection. For winter protection, windbreaks are generally oriented north and west of farmsteads, livestock concentration areas, working facilities, or other areas to be protected. Here's one example of a windbreak design called a single leg windbreak. An alternative design is two legs. It protects a greater area than a single leg windbreak. Extend the windbreak beyond the area you want to protect. If the windbreak isn't long enough, the wind will circle the ends of the windbreak, increasing the wind chill and dropping the snow right in the area you want to protect. Plant the windward tree rows about 150 to 250 feet upwind of the area to be protected. This will give space for snow deposition upwind of the area rather than having it dump on the area you want to protect. Field windbreaks designed to reduce wind erosion or protect field crops during the growing season are generally a single or double row oriented east-west to reduce summer winds. The east-west orientation helps to collect snow over the field in winter as well. The area protected by a windbreak on the leeward side depends on the height of the windbreak. Generally, a windbreak protects an area 10 to 15 times the average height of the tree. Two single row windbreaks spaced across the field may be better than one double row windbreak. Two single row windbreaks protect twice the cropped area, but with the same amount of land in tree rows. I'm Jan Hingstrom with UNL Extension, and thanks to Dennis Adams of the Nebraska Forest Service and Jay Seaton, Lower Platte South Natural Resources District, for information and photos.